What you're saying is this cup of coffee's bad for me? Wait, so now it's good for me. What? Which one is it? I'll figure it out myself. Let's take a look at coffee. Is it really good for me or is it pointless? Over 400 billion cups of coffee are consumed a year, making it the most consumed beverage in the entire world. In America, 450 million cups of coffee are consumed every day, and I probably contribute like a million of those cups. Let's face it, I'm a coffee addict and I know a lot of other people are as well. Is this business killing me? Is it improving my health? Am I optimizing my health by drinking it? I don't know, so let's find out. Is coffee really good for us? Well, it's kind of complicated. Not all coffees are made the same, and coffee is a bean. The way that people farm plants in today's world and beans, all that stuff, is that they grow with pesticides to get all the insects, all the weeds away from the beans. This means that your cheaper beans are most likely full of pesticides. There's a good chance the coffee you consume has mold. Overall, could be pretty bad for you. Glycosate and all these pesticides that are used are horrible for the body. If you're not consuming a good quality coffee, chances are you're consuming some of these bad things. Do not want pesticides in your body. Also, coffee can get moldy. Mold toxicity is something that's pretty hard to diagnose. It's probably underdiagnosed and causes a lot of issues in humans. Another reason that the type of coffee you get needs to be of good quality. If the coffee you consume is roasted improperly and is burned or charred, this also depletes all the positive effects of coffee. So you're kind of consuming it for no reason. So one of the main problems with coffee is just the caffeine. If we overconsume caffeine, we will get adrenal fatigue. Our adrenals won't be able to keep up. The coffee keeps telling our receptors to, you know, hype up, get pumped up, turn off the tiredness, turn off the fatigue. But over time, if you're overconsuming caffeine, this leads to problems and your adrenals will get burnt out and you will be fatigued for good. So overconsumption can definitely be a bad thing. Also depending on what type of metabolizer of caffeine you are, it could lead to problems. A small percentage of people when they metabolize coffee can see huge spikes in glucose, they get really anxious, get really sweaty very fast. Others can have 3, 10, 20 million cups and they feel just fine. If you start to feel sick, sweaty, anxious from coffee, you're definitely over consuming and you might be a bad metabolizer of it. This is a sign that you probably shouldn't have it, unfortunately for you. Another big issue with caffeine, and I see it a lot with nurses, is consuming caffeine at a bad time of the day. My suggestion is to not consume caffeine past lunchtime because it can mess with your circadian rhythm. Even if you think that you're not affected by caffeine, you are. It is doing something to your circadian rhythm. You're probably not getting as deep a sleep as you should be getting, and this is probably due to caffeine. And as a nurse, I see it all the time. When I was working night shift, I was consuming caffeine. I'd start drinking caffeine at like six at night. Um, I'd drink it all the way until like two in the morning, and then I'd go to sleep at like eight in the morning and I was messed up, I was jacked up and coffee did not help. So I think if you're a night shift worker, caffeine's probably not the best answer for you. I know how much you want it and I know how addicting it is because it's basically the only thing to keep you going but I think there needs to be alternatives 
because it's throwing off your circadian rhythm so much. Don't drink caffeine past lunchtime and you shouldn't have any problems. But if you do, that caffeine continues to stimulate you, makes it hard for you to fall asleep for a very, very long time. This means that you're gonna go to bed later and when you do fall asleep, you're not gonna sleep as deep, not gonna sleep as well, not gonna have dreams, rest, recovery, all that stuff. So let's talk about the side that I love, the reasons why coffee is good for you. The pros of coffee, uh, I only need to list one, it's that it's a beast and it tastes amazing. Okay, that was two. First is that coffee has a ton of antioxidants, so this means it can help with free radical damage and get rid of some of the toxins in our body. One recent study actually showed that having a cup a day was linked to having less viral infections, including the infection that must not be named. Pretty cool. So coffee can also help with immunity. Along with that antioxidants, uh, a lot of studies have shown an increase in longevity, lifespan, health span when people drink coffee. So there is a correlation between drinking coffee and living a long life. I don't know about you, but I wanna live till I'm old and I wanna be healthy along the way. So if coffee does that for me, do it. You gotta tell me twice. That's easily done. So coffee has also been shown to help prevent against Parkinson's, Alzheimer's. It helps prevent cancers. One of the more obvious benefits is just the mental alertness we get from coffee. Now like I said, if you have adrenal fatigue, it won't work the same. So you have to consume this well and appropriately. Studies also showed that having coffee can help with fat loss. Having a cup of coffee in a fasted state and then going on a light walk or something can definitely help lose weight. Caffeine itself can speed up the metabolism and help lose weight and burn extra calories. Coffee is also satiating, so it makes you put off eating longer, it makes you feel fuller, also can help with weight loss for that reason. It can help with liver function, with glucose regulation, helps a lot with blood flow. I forgot to mention earlier, another benefit of coffee is peristalsis, and it helps with regular bowel movements. So drinking coffee increases peristalsis, which gets that stool moving through you. And one of the best parts of coffee is the community. You can go out to coffee shops with friends, have a nice cup of coffee, experiment with different types of coffee, talk with people about types that you like, types that they like. Coffee just builds this good community. It's just a fun experience as well, so I love that about coffee. So we've heard the good and bad, let's talk about how to drink coffee right. First, make sure they're organic beans and that the company Make sure that they are roasted right, that they're from a good source, pesticide free, yada yada yada. Make sure that you have a good source of coffee bean. Next, don't over consume caffeine. So that means limiting yourself to a cup or two, only drinking it earlier in the morning to midday, not past lunchtime. One suggestion that I've heard that I think works really well is to do three weeks of drinking coffee, regular coffee, and then do a week of drinking decaf or not drinking it at all, switching to tea, switching it up a bit. This can be a good way to not get addicted and to not burn out those adrenals. So what we've learned today is that coffee can be good for you in moderation, in the right amounts, and from a good source. Go to my brand new website, check it out. Um, go to the links below and those are products that I personally use that I like, so I link them below for you. Make sure you subscribe and like the video and I'm gonna go get another cup of coffee you go kill it today, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Yeah.